Biotherapeutics use cells and components of cells such as proteins, uh, 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 genetic material, uh, viruses to uh, harness the cell's own machinery to actually address the underlying process of disease. So biotherapies are uh, therapeutic molecules or uh, cells or viruses that are actually uh, produced from living tissues. And so they're very compatible with our bodies. Um, unlike chemotherapy, which is really chemicals that are used to try to poison particular kinds of tumors, for instance, or radiation therapy, which you know it comes from a radioactive source. These are our therapies, uh, biotherapies are, are entities that come from our own bodies or from tissues from our own bodies that can be engineered to be highly selective. Uh, so the, the beauty of biotherapeutics is that they can change the way that, that we treat people, right? For example, the first biotherapeutic was insulin, and insulin has helped many, many people over decades uh, that suffer from diabetes. So they have the power to be less toxic, specific, and really make a change in, in patients' lives. To do manufacturing of pharmaceutical grade medicines, these have to be done under conditions which are extremely uh, clean and safe so that we don't inadvertently put something into the medicine that, that we don't want there. So the people who are trained in what's called a GMP or good manufacturing practice uh, are people who are highly trained. They have to learn how to gown up so there really is no uh, skin visible on their, on their body. They wear face masks and completely covered, covered head to toe. And that in itself is a real art form to learn how to, to dress like that without contaminating yourself. You'd be surprised how challenging that is. And then the work has to be done in specialized uh, manufacturing suites which have uh, highly purified air circulating in them. They have uh, multiple levels of, of air quality to get you to the final stage where you have ultra pure air that's used. Uh, to allow us to manufacture in an area where there's really no bacteria or any other kinds of viruses or anything floating around the air. It's extremely clean. Uh, and then these facilities themselves, which is quite remarkable, have to be cleaned. Uh, every day that we're going to use them, they have to be washed on the floor, the walls, and the ceiling in great detail every single day to make sure they're ultra clean. And then we do a lot of testing of the walls and the floors to make sure there are no uh, adventitious agents, as we say, or bacteria or fungus that could, potent could potentially be there to contaminate our product. So this is really a, a, both a science and an art form that really has to take place and it requires highly sophisticated, uh, uh, highly purified uh, air-containing suites uh, and, and very beautifully clean walls. The walls are, are finished in such a way that nothing can grow on them and the corners are all coved and rounded out so they're very easy to clean. So it's a very specialized kind of suite that we're very fortunate to have here in Ottawa. I think when the pandemic first struck, uh, like everyone, it seemed a bit surreal. Uh, I think the thing that scared me the most was how little we knew about this virus. Uh, we didn't uh, know uh, how it was transmitted, uh, we didn't know who was most at risk, and we certainly didn't know how to treat this. So as a researcher, when you're faced with these important questions, it really kicks you into high gear and you say, well, this is the time we've really got to get started and find the answers to these important questions. As, as a virologist, I understood just really how quickly these viruses could potentially spread throughout the human population. And we really was hoping at that point that it, this wouldn't be the case. But and then as we moved into 2020, we could see that in fact, uh, that this virus had some, some um, characteristics which is allowing it to spread well within the human population. And certainly, I think, uh, you know, we recognize that this is going to be a long-term problem. So, you know, as a result, my research group, I was quite proud of them, very quickly pivoted and said, you know, we've been working on cancer, we're working on immune stimulation, but we could use these same technologies to, uh, to really try to solve the COVID problem. And uh, very quickly with my colleagues, uh, Carolina Ilko, uh, jean simon Diallo, Rebecca Auer, we began to develop uh, strategies uh, that could be used uh, in to, to fight the COVID virus, either as drugs, as vaccines, or other kinds of immune-stimulating uh, molecules. And, and we really felt it was important to do this because, uh, you know, our passion has been trying to find solutions for cancer and help cancer patients. And we knew that COVID would be really dangerous for cancer patients, so we felt uh, it was important for us to put a lot of effort into trying to develop vaccines and therapies as quickly as we could. So we'd already done a uh, phase one safety trial using uh, the very same kind of uh, cell type, stem cell type, to treat patients with severe septic shock. And these patients share many of the same features as COVID patients, including 
uh, this severe lung injury that makes the lungs unable to take up oxygen. Yeah, when, we, uh, when we had the first uh, patient enrolled and receiving the first dose of this cell product, it, it was really amazing. Although we've done a number of these trials, it, it's always a, um, uh, a suspenseful experience because you never know what's going to happen with a new product and you're always uh, concerned there might be some problems or reactions to it. So you, you can feel the tension um, and I was actually uh, come in and I was there at the bedside in the intensive care unit as we did this. Uh, you know, it's all sort of holding our breath a bit. It's a bit like the Mars landing, where <laughs> you don't, don't know what's going to happen. And of course, uh, as always, uh, things went very smoothly. There were no problems or reactions whatsoever. And, and then you feel this sense of, not relief, but of hope, because you start thinking, well, you know, maybe this will make a difference. We work in biotherapeutics and we work in making um, oncolytic viruses, so, or cancer-killing viruses. And the beauty of this uh, virus is that um, most of them, indeed, the skeleton of those cancer-killing viruses is indeed uh, vectors or, or pieces that have been used in the past for vaccine development. Uh, one example is we work with a virus that has been used to, to eradicate the smallpox. Um, and that is the almost that the building blocks for many of our biotherapeutics that we are doing for, for cancer treatment. But instead of fighting cancer, we make them fight COVID. So we change the aspect to now be able to stimulate our immune system to fight uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus that caused COVID-19 disease. So we're hearing a lot in the media now about uh, the relative lack of biomanufacturing facilities in Canada. So uh, I believe that uh, the, the capacity we have here at the Ottawa Hospital can really help in addressing this. Uh, in fact, we are already involved in the manufacture of three vaccines uh, now for which will be entering clinical testings and hope, hopefully uh, being available to the general population in the near future. But perhaps the most importantly, uh, is having a world-class biomanufacturing facility embedded within a teaching hospital. We are ideally positioned uh, to train these highly skilled workers, the technicians that actually uh, do the manufacturing, and that's really where the magic happens. In fact, we have a unique training program uh, that uh, uh, develops these skills, uh, not only for our manufacturing facility, but for facilities across Canada. You know, I, I think one of the, uh, the great features about working here in Ottawa, because uh, I started my career in, in, at McGill University and I moved to Ottawa very quickly because uh, in Ottawa, uh, they offered us the opportunity to have manufacturing uh, and also great clinical colleagues so that uh, discoveries we made in the lab could quickly be produced into uh, pharmaceutical grade products and have clinicians here who are interested in helping us test them in patients and that's certainly been very, very attractive and so it's been great uh, to be here and have the ability, I mean many people unfortunately just have to stay home and hope that things uh, can change and we are here and can do things to, to change. Uh, it's really an opportunity you can't have in any other place than Ottawa because of the kind of facilities that we have here and it's been really exciting and motivating for us to, to come to work and as I said our, our passion really is trying to find solutions uh, for the disease of cancer and, and you know we have a lot of concern for cancer patients and given that they are often going to be immune suppressed COVID's a real uh, issue for them and certainly uh, we're working hard to do what we can to, to help these people who are at great risk. Uh, my colleague Rebecca Auer has started a beautiful trial, a phase 3 study, looking for an immune stimulating molecule that will help to boost the immune systems of cancer patients. And uh, vaccines that we're making here with Carolina Ilko, as I mentioned, uh, Bill Cameron, one of the docs here in Infectious Disease, Jonathan Angel, they'll be involved in helping us test that in patients once we can t we've got the proof of concept that our vaccines are safe and effective. So. I think it's quite special and, and it's, it's a unique position to feel like vaccines and, and uh, other products also, right, like uh, are being made here at, at the Orawa Hospital uh, and hopefully will help uh, many people across Canada. So I think we, we are lucky to be in this position. We are also, we work hard also to get there uh, professionally, but also the community uh, indeed came together 
and, and help us to, to build the facility that we have. So I think we are proud uh, that we have this facility and, and we have it because uh, support of many people, in, including donors, including the community, um, as well as the government that, and, and funding organizations that have helped us through the years to be uh, indeed in this unique position of having a facility up and running with the skilled people working in it. So I think we, I'm, I'm proud of, of what we have developed over the years. Community support is absolutely essential. While the Ottawa Hospital is one of the most successful hospitals in obtaining highly competitive research funds, these grants only support the costs of the research projects. Uh, and they don't support the maintenance uh, and the operations of the facility, which of course is vital uh, to, uh, to the success of the research program. So we really depend on the community to allow us to have the kind of core facilities that uh, allow us to do these innovative projects, and in particular biomanufacturing, uh, which uh, is a key element in terms of uh, our success. Uh, you, you know, I love my job, I, I really enjoy coming to work every day, but the only way I can do my job is with support uh, from the community, both nationally and locally. And Ottawa has been incredibly supportive of the work I've been doing for the last 30 years that we've been in Ottawa. Uh, that's where we get the money that we need to do the research. Research is a ex very expensive venture. Uh, there is just no other source of funding except from uh, people in Ottawa and people across the country who donate to organizations uh, like the Ottawa Hospital Foundation. And so it's the generosity of people who really I, I really uh, respect um, a lot because they're entrusting us to do the right thing by making donations or through their tax dollars to help support research. And research is critical as we've seen now in this pandemic. Uh, with research we, we can solve big problems but it's also critical if we want to have an economy that's a knowledge-based economy, one that people can actually uh, thrive in and, and really have opportunities to grow in. So it's that local support uh, that we need to keep this going, to keep our hospitals uh, functioning with the world-class doctors and scientists that come and are attracted here. Uh, you know, it's, it's really quite interesting. I think uh, if you're looking at some of the world's leading doctors, where do they want to go and practice medicine? They want to practice medicine in places where there's great research programs. And the opposite is also true. So the best scientists want to go to centers where their work can actually be taken and tested in patients with the world's leading doctors. And so because of that local support here in Ottawa, it's built a community of science and medicine that really is helping both us to do what we do, but also I think help the people of Ottawa uh, have access to the most cutting edge kinds of therapies and medicines. <laughs>